kindly give some advice and insights on finding and selecting a niche. How do you determine whether a niche you selected is good to go or not? Um, so yeah, uh, I would say one, one cool thing to do is to look at a website like Flippa. So you could go to flippa.com. Let me pull this up for you real quick. Cloudflare keeps checking me. It doesn't like my location, I think. Um, but yeah, so basically, you know, it's a marketplace to buy and sell uh, websites. So you can go and you can uh, search for something. Did they change it since I've last been here? Um, uh, let's just go look at blogs. What is this? I feel like they've changed it since the last time I was here. But anyway, uh, so yeah, you can basically, we're in here, we're looking for blogs right now and you can use these filters over here on the left side. Um, yes, yeah, so we're searching for blogs right now. You look doing like review websites or like e-commerce, SaaS, whatever, whatever kind of website you're looking for. And then you can come down and you can, I like to set like monthly profit and say make, it's like making a minimum of like $500 a month or something. And basically then you'd go through and uh, find company. And you could also do stuff like, um, so you could say it's like uh, making $500 a month and then you could set the authority score to something low. So let's, let's say like authority score of 30 and um, it's making a minimum of $500 per month. Did that. Uh, anyway, so basically what I'm not going to try to figure out the website right now. I'm just trying to give you a quick answer, but you set it for like $500 a month minimum and like a lower authority score. And now what you're going to find are websites that are actually making money and they don't have a ton of backlink authority, which means that it'd be easier for you to do. And you, you know, you're, you're already, uh, you're able to, a lot of these websites, you can actually look at the actual websites, you know, they don't have them blocked locked off so you can actually pull them up in Ahrefs and stuff. You can go and you can look at what affiliate programs they're using. You can see exactly how these guys are making money and how much money they're making. So you have essentially what's a proof of concept already. You can find niches this way that you know are already making money and exactly how they're making money and how much money they're making and how much authority and how much content they need to make that much money. So it's a really good way to get some like uh, good insight into yeah all that stuff. Um, other than that, uh, I like to just poke around a lot on Ahrefs. Um, I really like to find uh, stuff that has, uh, you know, a good amount of low competition stuff that you can start off ranking. Um, so, you know, if you go into Ahrefs, let me see, Keywords Explorer. Um, what's a key? What's a niche we can go into, Nick? Uh... Cat toys I'm just going to look up birds because I've been watching uh, Julian Goldie's uh, YouTube channel because he's just been doing some fun like AI experiments. Mm. Um, so yeah, I've gone into Ahrefs Keywords Explorer and I've typed in birds here. Uh, sorry, give me one second. Uh, then what you can do is you can come over to like questions over here. And so questions generally have uh, a lot lower... Um, keyword difficulty just because it's more informational. You know, it's not something like uh, best bird cages or like, uh, you know, something like that, which will be more competitive with affiliates and stuff. So you can come into questions, hit view all. Um, you can see right off the bat, just look at all this green in here, right? And you could play with these filters even more. You could do something like doing, um, uh, you could say like uh, keyword difficulty, you know, maximum of, 20 and you could say the lowest DR. So basically this is saying, uh, you know, you're looking for a DR 20 website in the ranking in the top 10. Uh, it's just something that we used to have to check manually, but Ahrefs updated their thing. So you can actually do this now. So now what you're doing is you're finding low, low keyword difficulty keywords that also have a low authority uh, site ranking in the top 10. And this is good to do because Ahrefs, the way they calculate stuff, uh, keyword difficulty is based on backlinks to the specific page versus they, they don't really calculate they don't really calculate that number looking at the website's authority so this lets you do that as well then you hit show results and then boom you got all these keywords in here and look at all this green with this like good search volume now these are not like super low search volume terms these are stuff that you could rank for quite easily 
And so you could really, um, you know, start building up some traffic to your website um, and then kind of do like the Kyle Roof, you know, avalanche technique where you, uh, you know, once you basically are ranking for a bunch of stuff in this kind of lower tier, then you kind of work up to the medium difficulty stuff. Now you're doing some interlinking and you're really trying to drive your traffic to your more money making pages. And, you know, this, uh, this stuff, maybe you're not making a ton of money off the, the informational stuff quite yet, but you can monetize with ads. And then, yeah, you know, using interlinking smartly, some buttons, some pop-ups and whatnot to get them to your email list or where you want them on your, on your website. And so um, I spent a lot of time in the Ahrefs Keywords Explorer just tr trying to validate if the niche has some low competition stuff with decent, like, search volumes and whatnot. Um, anything to add on that, Nick? Finding a good niche? Um yeah, the only thing that um, I would add here is, especially when you're first starting out, you know, uh, some of it's going to depend on whether you're rolling this new project and this new idea with cash and you're going to be outsourcing a good amount of it, especially like content writing or content creation, um, or whether you're going to be doing it yourself and you're going to be using your own sweat equity to, you know, get this thing rolling. Um, if you're like me, then you started probably with the first thing. Um, and I remember thinking more with, uh, what I wanted my wallet to look like than what I wanted to do to kind of get me motivated to keep writing. Um, if you're going to be the one that's writing, that's creating content, that's doing a whole bunch of that stuff, there's going to be openings within any broad niche. Okay. You'll be able to find them using what Chris just said. It's going to help you be motivated to work on this project, um, to want to kind of, you know, put this content out there to write about it if you're interested in it. Um, otherwise, you know, you might have full steam ahead for a handful of months or even like 100, 200 articles if you've got that kind of gusto. But for the average person that never really wrote that much, um, it's going to wear you down. And even if you're not thinking about that, um, having something that you're more interested in, or at least a niche that like, you know, you like to sink your teeth into, I think is going to help quite a bit. Now, if you're thinking just from, you know, wallet perspective and you're rolling, um, trying to create teams, then yeah, uh, you know, if, if, if that's more your interest, then, um, you can just kind of, um, pick wherever there's, um, you know, openings and an ability to make money. Um, but yeah, those would just be a couple of things to keep in mind when you're first starting a new project. Yeah. And I'll just emphasize one more time, you know, the, the last method I showed you, cause we didn't really talk about monetization and that, but you know, you want to find stuff that has that low competition stuff that also has a way to monetize. Um, yeah. so you, you know, you always want to be looking, you know, just go look up some of the big people in the space and just see how they're making their money. Right. See if there's anything, if there's a, any there, there, um, you, you know, you don't want to pick something that's really hard to, to sell people on. Uh, so what, what would be an example of this? Um, actually, I don't, I don't even know if this would be a really bad one, but for example, uh, like minimalism, you know, it's the idea of you not needing much to, or whatever in your life to, to be happy. So if you're doing kind of like a spirituality blog and it was based on minimalism, well, how much are minimalistic people going to want to spend, right? Um, but there, you know, I could be wrong on that. They might want to do some like uh, courses or there, there might be some affiliate programs out there for like uh, little retreats or getaways or a book or whatever. Um, coaching, I I'm not really sure, but... Uh, Minimalist accent bosses, designer... You know, they spend yeah. a lot of I money mean, you could get like, guys. if you went to like minimalist, like design type stuff, yeah, for their home or whatever, then it would kind of turn into mm -hmm. a pretty like different type of, of website at that point, It'd be kind of like a product reviews and recommendations things from a uh, more spirituality website. But hey, it might be actually something worth doing because it would all be based around minimalism still. So you might, you could, might want to look into Nick's idea right there. I actually kind of like that idea. <laughs> That's cool. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, yeah, always look for monetization, make sure there's a way to make money on it. And, uh, yeah, also you don't, most of the time you don't want some like super like small sale, super small ticket items, right? You want something a little bit larger would be ideal. Um, you know, something that's not like five bucks, 10 bucks, um, would definitely be easier for you to, to make some money off of if you're doing affiliate. Um, anything else on that one, Nick? Oh, all good. Awesome.
Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Be sure to check the links below for more info on this topic, as well as other cool stuff like SEO case studies, our Facebook community, and our link building services. And like always, please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks, and happy ranking.